Welcome to this presentation of Aging at the Speed of Life, prepared specifically for the 16-county East Tennessee region as continuing outreach by East Tennessee Quality Growth and as an updated and focused companion to the Population at the Speed of Life video series available on the Quality Growth YouTube channel. The aging of our population has been and continues to be an important transformation within our community. Understanding population growth, change, and aging is important for various undertakings, whether you are in government, a civic group, a nonprofit service organization, or a business, or just an informed citizen. Making analysis vibrant and optimally useful requires more than just presenting data, tables, and graphs. It requires understanding the life dynamics underlying population change and transformation to glean insights from the past to comprehend the present, and to imagine the future. Knowledge is important, but an informed imagination is more important than knowledge alone. My goal is to engage your imagination and inform it as we consider the aging transformation of our population over more than 120 years. Imagine East Tennessee, population, growth, and change, and the aging of our population. We can begin by tracking changes in the age distribution of the population from the past to the present and projected into the future. The distribution shows population count by five-year age groups, from zero to four years old on the left to 85 years old and older on the right. We begin in 1950 and will progress the distribution to 2070 to illustrate the basics of demographic change and aging transformation. The distribution of population by age in 1950 looked like a slightly irregular and flattened pyramid, rotated and laid on its side, with a large young base and a small old apex. This was a young population in 1950 with relatively few members at older ages. Remember this shape for comparisons later. Before we dig deeper, let us preview the aging transformation of the population over 120 years, decade by decade, to 2070. And back. We are interested in the aging of the population into older adult or senior years. Thus, we need to define by age the senior population. The definition may be based on many factors and may vary by source, but usually follows traditional span of age 65 and older, consistent with the past norm for start of Social Security and Medicare benefits and retirement from full-time workforce. In the following analysis, reference is made to various generations as markers in relation to the aging transformation of the population. This was the trend in U.S. births along with generations by birth year. The spans of older generations are fairly well accepted for the World War II GI or greatest generation, the smaller silent generation, and the much larger baby boom. However, the spans of newer generation X Generation Y, also called Millennials, and Generation Z are less settled. In particular, year boundaries and spans for Millennials and the following Generation Z were still being debated at the time of producing this video. Note that the Millennial generation in blue is shown as a 21-year span to the year 2000. The usefulness of the year 2000 Millennial marker to define a generation has come into question and some argue that the span for the millennial generation should be closer to 16 years, still allowing for generational coming of age during the new millennium, but bringing Generation Z about five years further into the graph. Some would limit the span of Generation Z to about 15 years to 2010, making the sequence of Generation X, Millennials, and Generation Z approximately the same spans. This adjustment is used in the analysis and narrative to follow, along with the partial emergence of a new generation of children that some are calling Alpha, born starting 2011 and still being born during production of this video. 
and for further context a precedent lost generation born mainly prior to the turn of the century and whose members came of age during world war one approximate generation age groups were used to fit graphics of population characteristics by age for five-year cohorts in the graphs to follow thus graphic portrayal will be off by a year or two for the actual beginning and ending birth years of most generations to track the transformation and aging of the population we will use the baby boom as our main marker here showing the leading edge born by 1950 as context we also identify the silent generation by s the world war ii gi generation by g and the world war i lost generation by l the gi generation and the silent generation were the parents of the emerging baby boom in successive graphs we will add generations x y and z as they emerge and the new generation alpha that is still being born during production of this video we will age the graphs in 10-year jumps consistent with the decennial census base of our historical data available to 2010 at time of production of this video from 1950 the graph ages 10 years to 1960 with the baby boom showing emergence of 15 years of its ultimate span of about 20. the emerging baby boom experienced high out migration during the decade from 1950 to 1960 particularly as silent generation parents left the region along with their young children by 1970 the baby boom was complete as the leading edge transitioned into young adult ages still experiencing out migration from 1960 to 1970 1980 saw a jump in the baby boom reflecting strong in migration of both young adults and parents with children from 1970 to 1980 the growth in overall population slowed from 1980 to 1990 with slight baby boom out migration the baby boom aged fully into adult status and reached the verge of middle age the next decade from 1990 to 2000 showed strong increase due to in migration followed by strong in migration increase the next decade from 2000 to 2010 the baby boom was then a mature population on the verge of entering senior years from 1950 to 2010 the senior population showed increase due partly to more recent in migration but also due to aging of the three generations preceding the baby boom the region was a retirement destination especially for the silent generation and this boosted the senior population the population was transforming to an older distribution even before the baby boom aged into senior years note that continued in migration across most ages forms part of the assumptions for population projections to follow and will continue as part of the life dynamic of increase in the senior population projecting the distribution to 2020 consistent with data for previous videos in the population at the speed of life series shows the first part of the baby boom entering senior years quickening the aging transformation this population distribution was based on an older set of projections published in 2019 by the university of tennessee center for business and economic research or cber we can now update to newer projections published in february of 2022 by cber New data allow an estimation of the 2020 population distribution using recently released 2020 census total population count and other age-related demographic estimates. The changes in the age distribution between the old and new projections were minor and did not materially affect the analysis between this presentation and the previous video presentations in the Population at the Speed of Life series. We can now switch from 10-year jumps to 5-year jumps as we age the graphs across the screen, gaining finer detail in the process. Pay close attention to the age group 85 years old and older, which demographers have labeled the oldest old. This will be an additional focus of aging transformation in our future population. Putting the graph in motion again, we see the aging of the baby boom to 2025 and fully aging into senior years by 2030. 
The increase in the oldest old population is projected to keep pace with the increase in the remainder of the senior population, as the silent generation ages further into old age. The baby boom is now on the verge of making another substantial transformation of the oldest old population over the projected next 20 years. To 2050. The baby boom again will form the leading edge of a transformation to a much older distribution. Over the same period, the remainder of the senior distribution is projected to increase, as Generation X and the leading edge of Generation Y enter ages 65 and older. Over the projected next 20 years, the oldest old population will increase with aging of Generations X and Y at the same time that the baby boom will reach full extent of lifespan and pass from the population. To 2070. The passing of most of the previously large baby boom, along with aging of Generation X and leading edge of Generation Y, will result in a slowing of increase in the oldest old population, compared to the previous 20 years while maintaining the overall oldest old transformation started 40 years earlier. Over the projected final 20 years to 2070, the remainder of the senior distribution will continue to increase, as the trailing edge of Generation Y and the leading edge of Generation Z will enter senior years, maintaining the overall transformation of an older population started 120 years earlier. Comparing the 1950 age distribution to the projected 2070 distribution, we can see the transformation to an aging population over 120 years. The beginning of the baby boom around 1950 was not the beginning of a future tsunami as portrayed in the popular press. The baby boom was, and is, and will be the leading edge of a generation's long transformation of the population like a sea rise that will persist into the next century. To further illustrate the aging transformation and its long-term persistence, we can focus on the senior population count from 1950 to present and projected to 2070. The senior population increased continuously from 1950 to 2010. From 2010 to 2030, the aging of the baby boom results in a noticeable rush of senior population increase, which will moderate after 2030. To gain more comparable summary numbers, we can calculate the percentage of seniors to total population, resulting in a graph illustrating relative growth. The percentage of total population accounted to seniors age 65 and older rose from 1950 to 2010. The population was aging, even before entry of the baby boom into senior years. The pace increases as the relatively large baby boom is projected to age into senior years from 2010 to 2030. This is followed by a trend to leveling out from 2040 to 2070, maintaining at the higher level as successive Generation X, Millennials, and Generation Z continue to age into senior years. Focus on the 24.27% of total population in 2070. As this relates to the projected population distribution in senior years by 2070, ask yourself if this percent will decrease in the future to the turn of the next century and beyond. Given the relatively large generations that will age into senior years in subsequent decades, the percent of population accounted in senior years probably will not decrease but will continue into the future to 2100, and then well into the next century. The distribution of the population at that time will have momentum to maintain the higher percent of senior population, and thus maintain the past transformation to an aging population. How did we sustain a progressively aging population over such a long period of time? The answer is by progressively improving survival or staying alive longer. By 2010, as the baby boom reached the verge of entering senior years, the aging transformation was obvious compared to the starting pyramid shape in 1950. 
The relatively large bulge of the baby boom at the time raised concern of impact on the future senior population and related programs such as Social Security and Medicare. The popular press and some academic sources inaccurately labeled the pending phenomenon as a tsunami. I prefer to call it a persistent sea rise and use a more local term for future impact, triple whammy. The baby boom was a large birth generation. After initial out-migration during its first two decades of emergence, it grew by substantial in-migration, particularly in the 1990s and 2000 to 2010. And something not as evident, it was a generation that was surviving or living longer and thus reaching senior years in greater numbers. This last leg of the triple whammy may be the most important factor transforming population distribution by age, from the past and into the future. To facilitate consideration of this important factor, we use a series of U.S. survival functions from 1900 to 2000. The initial graph portrays expected survival of a cohort born in a given year, here 1900, assuming the death rates by age at the time. In reading the graph, the numbers reflect percent of total population expected to survive by year of age. As example, in 1900, you would expect 80% of the babies born would survive to age 5. That means that you would expect 1 in 5, or 20% of babies born in 1900, to die before age 5. The graph is essentially the inverse of the death rate. Jumping now to the year 2000, we see a great leap of improvement to less than 1 in 100 deaths by age 5 from expected 1 in 5 deaths in 1900. Most of the improvement in survival happened from 1900 to 1950, especially for the younger population, and most of that was due to the dramatic increase in survival for the population younger than 5 years. There also was a cumulative improvement of survival across all ages, such that a Generation Z baby born in the year 2000 could expect to greet a near 100% year-to-year survival well into its adult life and expect its cohort to survive to age 50 and older in high numbers. At the other end of the graph, the improvement in survival for the oldest old progressed apace, starting in 1900 with a low survival of about 6% at age 85 and showing substantial increase by 2000 to an expected survival of about 35%. This was part of the larger improvement in survival for seniors 65 and older, with expected survival to age 75 increasing threefold, reaching approximately the average life expectancy in 2000. Life expectancy continued to improve and increased by more than 30 years from 1900 to 2009, to shy of 80 years old as the baby boom was on the verge of entering senior years. Ancient text describes the situation fairly, with range of expected life from 70 to 80 years, with certain challenges in the interim. Remember labor and sorrow for future reference, from words written about 3,000 years ago. However, other ancient text provides a different perspective, beginning with a statement that fairly reflects the present situation of low infant mortality and longer life into older age for most adults, but raises the bar for ideal life expectancy to 100 or more, assuming successful breakthroughs in medicine and aging research and improved well-being in the future, we may be on the cusp of that ideal. And some speculate that many in the youngest generations present and being born today may routinely live to 100 or even 120 years old. Not only would this maintain the transformation of our aging population, but also may intensify it in the future. Let us now tie things together and exercise our imagination. Imagine generations connected. With each older generation improving well-being and survival, and improved well-being and survival progressively greeting each new generation. We start with the survival curve for 1900 and overlay generations of interest at the time. 
the unnamed three predecessor generations, span ages in which they would have impact on health and well-being of the contemporary and future population. The named lost generation was too young to have much impact at the time, but would come of age during World War I to take their literary moniker and impact in the next century. Let us now fast forward 50 years to find the predecessor generations aging out of high-impact years by 1950, with the lost generation in their prime, along with the G.I. or World War II's greatest generation, and the early years of the silent generation that would come of age at the end of World War II and shortly after. Over 50 years, these generations, from predecessor one to silent six, were instrumental in the big jump in survival to 1950, which greeted the baby boom. The accomplishments of at least six previous generations boosted the health, well-being, and survival chances of the large new generation being born around 1950. In recognition of improved health and longevity, let us expand the high-impact years to age 85. And again, fast forward another 50 years. By the year 2000, the first three predecessor generations passed off the graph. The lost generation and the leading edge of the GI generation aged through and out of high-impact years. The silent generation, the baby boom, and Generation X aged into their prime high-impact years. These generations built on the improvements from previous generations and improved by another 50-year increment the health and well-being and survival of the population. That greeted the emerging Generation Z. Let us again recognize the improvement in health and longevity and expand the high-impact years to age 90 and let's project to get more recent, to 2020. In recognition of recent activism that focuses on the awareness of youth for their own well-being and probable improvements in survival and longevity at older ages, we can expand the years of impact to encompass ages 15 to 95 and include much of Generation Z, Millennials or Generation Y, Generation X, the baby boom, and the silent generation, all of whom stand to improve well-being of the contemporary population and the well-being of generations to come. We can get a sense of the generational relationship by overlaying the first generations present 120 years prior in 1900. In relation to the baby boom, the links between health and well-being and improvement to survival spanned at least seven generations. This may challenge our thinking to consider a much expanded time horizon for contemplating our important work at hand. We are the first generation of more generations. Just as our predecessor generations improved our well-being, so we have the potential to improve the well-being of our seven-generation span. Our goals need not be limited to ourselves, our children, and grandchildren. Our goals may rightly consider even our great-great-great-great-grandchildren. What we do today, what we build today, can outlive us by many generations. The potential to impact health and well-being of contemporary and future generations should include the continuing active involvement of seniors aged 65 and older who may experience longer and healthier lives including the oldest old, for as long as they are able. Retirement and growing old need not lead to a cessation of involvement in a productive personal, family, and community life. Seniors can continue to apply their skills, accumulated knowledge, and life experience to the improvement of well-being and survival for themselves, their family, contemporary generations, and future generations yet unborn. We can continue to imagine the possibilities of generations connected with each older generation improving well-being and survival and improved well-being and survival progressively greeting each new generation, even to seven generations hence. On a more personal note, the baby child, more likely the grandchild, and more likely still the great-grandchild you hold today, may live upwards to 120 years to hold your great-great-great-great-grandchildren, 
Your Seven Generation Future Health plays a central role in our consideration of aging. Health is important in sustaining survival and lifespan, and is thus important in the life dynamic of population growth and aging. The profession of public health often refers to an aspirational definition that dates back more than 70 years. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Well-being is an inclusive term, encompassing the many factors that lead to survival and longer life. The profession of city and county planning also incorporates health as part of its purpose, exemplified in the purposes of the general plan, defined in Tennessee state legislation dating back almost 100 years, to best promote the health safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, and welfare, often shortened to health, safety, and welfare. Welfare was an old conceptually inclusive term that developed different meaning over time. The similarly inclusive term well-being from public health may serve better in present discourse on these values. Are there challenges to these values in relation to our aging population? Consider the quote attributed to Betty Davis, Getting old is not for sissies. There are a myriad of challenges facing us in our communities as we age. Recall the ancient text from 3,000 years ago, posing expectation of labor and sorrow with an extended life. That context, similar to present-day life expectancy between 70 and 80 years, probably did not envision the probability that children being born today may live beyond 80 years to 100 or 120 years old. What if labor and sorrow or impaired health and well-being were to extend into old age by 20 or 40 more years? Who would take the deal of extended suffering into a longer life? Our hope is that there may be many advancements in medical science on the horizon that can compress labor and sorrow into older ages thus extending the span of a long and healthy life. But still, as we age, physical changes may intensify and accumulate to a point that our health and even our life expectancy may become challenged. This may be especially true for Tennessee. Tennessee and many other southern states fall below the national average for life expectancy. Tennessee ranks down 45 out of 50 states. Reduced life expectancy is related to incidence of obesity and inactivity. Obesity and inactivity are linked to higher incidence of serious diseases, often associated with a cluster of conditions termed metabolic syndrome that can lead to earlier deaths and thus lower life expectancy. The incidence of obesity in Tennessee showed a dramatic shift over the years being less than 10% of the population in 1985, jumping to greater than 30% by 2010. Some call this an epidemic that is adversely affecting the health of a large portion of the population. The epidemic goes hand in hand with inactivity of the population, with Tennessee again showing adverse ranking along with other southern states. The risk of metabolic syndrome the cluster of physical changes and diseases related to obesity and inactivity, increases with age and is particularly prevalent in the senior population. So, what is the prescription for better health and well-being and longer life? Dr. Bob Overholt of the East Tennessee Public Television Health and Medicine Show, bearing his name, recommends exercising, eating properly, getting a good night's sleep, and including laughter in your life. Exercise or being physically active is especially important. It can have beneficial effect on health and well-being comparable to a blockbuster drug. And it can be an inexpensive prescription that includes routine activities of daily life in our communities. Health is related in many ways to our built environment in which we undertake those routine activities of daily life in our communities and is an important part of quality growth. This is recognized in the profession of city and regional planning, 
particularly planning for communities that can harvest the health benefits of exercise and active living. The profession of public health also recognizes the importance of the built environment in sustaining well-being. And there is a growing literature on how we can build our communities to enhance health. The Tennessee Department of Health recently launched a Built Environment and Health Program, which recognizes that how we build our communities is tied to primary prevention of disease and infirmity. In the broader umbrella of design professions that include architecture, engineering, and city planning, the principles of universal design provide useful guidance that our built environment should be designed to be usable by all people. This requires consideration of all ages and physical conditions, including the elderly and disabled. How do you make sure someone is paying attention to the issues, needs, and challenges of seniors? You can designate a system to plan and program from state to region to local and back. The state of Tennessee has a system for addressing the issues of aging and disability. The Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability acts as a conduit for program funds under the Federal Government Older Americans Act and various other program funds from federal and state sources. The Commission addresses the needs of persons ages 60 and older and coordinates with several other state agencies. The main implementation arm of the Commission are nine regional area agencies on aging and disability, or triple ADs. The triple ADs plan a system of services within their region based on state allocation of funds. Several agency programs provide opportunities for volunteer service. The triple ADs oversee multipurpose senior centers, providing a wide array of information resources and services in all counties in the state. Funding includes not only federal funds, but state funds, and funds provided by local governments and the community. The local senior center also provides a venue for volunteer service. Many of the programs of the Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability provide avenues for local volunteers to become involved in providing services to seniors and the disabled. As example, one of those programs addresses our values of health, safety, and well-being. The SAIL program, or Staying Active and Independent for Life, promotes health through exercise, with focus on safety through balanced training to reduce fall risk, and supports well-being by enhancing ability to age in place at home. With coverage unique to East Tennessee, the East Tennessee AAAD works in tandem with county-level offices on aging. The local offices on aging act as adjunct points of entry to agency programs and services and often act as direct program service providers under contract with the AAAD. The local offices provide opportunity for local volunteer service. The local offices on aging may also act as a resource for innovation. For example, the Blunt County Office on Aging undertook a community outreach that included identifying priority issues with aging in the community. The top priority from the outreach process was transportation. The Office on Aging then formed a senior advisory council to formulate a local program of volunteer drivers using their own vehicles serving the door-to-door -door transportation needs of seniors who are not able to drive. The program offers an avenue for abled adult and senior volunteer drivers to provide rides to less abled seniors. The program generates funding from modest user fees, along with support from both state and federal funds and local funding drives. The program acts as a more flexible and senior-focused alternative to existing public transportation van service offered by the Regional East Tennessee Human Resource Agency and expands the provision of transportation service in the county. The Blunt County Senior Miles Program provided a successful local template for developing a statewide program called My Ride Tennessee under the Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability, thus making a loop of innovative planning and programming back to the top. The programs of the AAADs provide many opportunities for all adult ages and generations to become involved in providing services to the older population. 
such volunteers put a reverse spin on our seven generation ideal of each older generation improving well-being and survival and improved well-being and survival progressively greeting each new generation but may be seen as growing and maintaining a system that can accommodate present and future seniors as the volunteers themselves age paying it forward on a broader policy canvas the proportional changes over time between children seniors and the workforce pose a different type of challenge consider the pyramid shape of the 1900 u.s population distribution the distribution showed a large population of children and youth less than 20 years old and a small population of seniors aged 65 and older the proportion of children and youth to working age population ages 20 to 64 years was relatively large and the proportion of seniors to working age population was relatively small fast forward to 2010 the working age population grew but so did the populations of children and seniors the shifting of dependency ratios or proportion of children and old age seniors to working age population is of particular interest in considering the policy impacts of our aging population we focus on the historical trend from 1950 to 2010 and projected to about 2080 consistent with other analysis in this presentation we see a peak of total dependency ratio at about 1965 or about the cumulative end of the baby boom the shifts in child dependency ratio dominated the shifts in total dependency ratio around that time old age dependency ratio played a minor role in defining the peak there followed a period of relatively small increase for old age dependency ratio up to 2010 which was about the low point of total dependency ratio while the child dependency ratio dominated overall trend with a succession of factors the first being the large drop in fertility after the baby boom even with the large drop in fertility the overall number of babies and children again began to increase with aging of the baby boom and generation x into fertile years which paralleled an increase in the workforce also associated with the aging of the baby boom and generation x and this helped stabilize the child dependency ratio for a while births then peaked and began to drop along with the return to falling fertility rate the child dependency ratio thus again dominated the trend in total dependency as old age dependency remained a minor driver of trend up to about 2010 the projected child dependency ratio then levels out and becomes a very minor factor in changing overall trend after 2010 but still tracks above the old age dependency ratio by 2010 the baby boom had aged into mature years and was thus on the verge of entering old age as the baby boom entered old age the projected old age dependency ratio begins to rise steeply and old age dependency dominates the trend in total dependency following full aging of the baby boom into senior years and the subsequent aging of generations x y and z the projected rise in old age dependency ratio moderates but still dominates the trend in change of total dependency notice that old age dependency is projected to approach but not overtake child dependency the aggregate effect of changes in total dependency ratio highlights that the combined near parity of child and old age dependency around 2080 will not rise to the peak level of 1965 total dependency driven by emergence of the baby boom yet there remains a concern with our aging population and old age dependency in the future the cost of raising children and the cost of addressing challenges of an aging population are substantial however there are major policy concerns with societal resources that support the senior population as people age into senior years they quickly increase their demand on those resources this is especially true for the oldest old age 85 and older who often face progressively more severe challenges of health and finance a major societal support program for health care of the senior population is medicare that program as presently constituted faces increasing challenge 
and its trust fund is projected to be depleted by 2028. Another major societal support program for the senior population is Social Security. That program, as presently constituted, also faces increasing challenge and its trust fund is projected to be depleted by 2035. The projected transition of the baby boom into the oldest old ages 85 and older from 2030 to 2050 will pose even greater challenges to support programs for a burgeoning segment of our population that typically faces greater financial and medical issues. And the trend of increasing oldest old will continue, with projected aging of generations X and Y or millennials. The demands on public coffers is expected to rise in the future with the aging of our population. So, when should we address our core values in relation to our aging population? For challenges we may face due to our aging population, if we address those challenges now, we will address them for the many generations to follow. The important point is to start addressing the challenges now, as the senior population is on a quick rise, exposing or highlighting many critical issues. I invite you to imagine that this is our quest. Health, safety, well-being, survival into a long and healthy life, quality growth, both of a healthy population and of a healthy built environment to sustain that population. And our communities will be better for this. For us, in following generations, to live long and prosper and be well. Imagine that. Thank you for imagining with me. Hi, I am John Lamb, producer of Aging at the Speed of Life and the narrator for this presentation. I am retired after almost 22 years as Blunt County Director of Planning, and I continue activity in local groups addressing the issues of aging and health. I am also member of similar groups at the regional level in East Tennessee. And I am president of East Tennessee Quality Growth, or ETQG, covering the 16 counties shown on the map. East Tennessee Quality Growth is a 501c3 nonprofit organization with mission to promote regional and local dialogue along with regional cooperation and local action. This video was produced as a volunteer service with no funding from any government or private organization. You may access more videos on population growth and change in the 16 counties of the East Tennessee Quality Growth Region on the Quality Growth YouTube channel.